Hi everybody, Jessie here from jessiebanks.com and welcome back to another video. Sorry for the glare on that, it's my big light overhead. Anyway, I bought something I didn't need, <laughs> so I have a problem. Um, <laughs> didn't need it, bought it anyway, wanted the tin. No, I'm kidding. Well, yes, but anyway, I digress. Let's get on with this. So this is the new Daniel Smith watercolor set. They did plastic sets a year or two ago. And they were a disaster. Nobody was happy with the palettes. They leaked water. They just weren't nice. So now they went and did metal tins. And they did kind of the same idea as their ultimate mixing palette. So you get the 24, the set of 24 half pans. And then you get a bonus empty tin. So you get the empty box. Here, we'll open this one first. I've kept all these boxes because I wanted to do this all with you guys. So... I love that they're a matte black. They're not a shiny black. Hang on here. I have other palettes in my drawer. Like this one, you can see, I don't know if, you, yeah, you can see the difference. So this one's matte black and this one's shiny. Look, I haul them all over the place. So they get dinged up and beat up and I take them like across the country and all over. This is my stone ground set that I've built over the years. Love their paints. They're great handmade paints in Regina. I digress. Back to this. So I love that they're matte black. This is the empty one. So when you open it up, it's got a piece of foam to stop everything from bouncing and shaking out. And you have 24 half pans in here. Now, let's see here. I don't believe there's enough room for an extra one there. Just hang on. Let's pop one of these ones out. No. So you cannot fit like the 13 pans across in here. And you also cannot stick one in the middle. So I wish they would have bumped these back so you could have fit the third row in. But it's a beautiful palette. I love that it's matte black. The inside is metal. I use my metal tins. I know some people don't like them and like using ceramic and things. I'm just going to put this in the pile for the recycle bin later. Same with this stuff. Um, so I know some people don't like using them and they take the little floppy piece off and whatnot. But I really, I like, I really enjoy my metal tins. I like that this does not dip down like when it's open. You can see how it'll... It, it'll lay relatively flat so you can use this as a mixing area and it's not going to be super tipped down I'm really happy with the way the palette appears now we'll open the one with all the paints in it so this one is the set of 24 extra fine watercolors um, hand poured half pan watercolors in a metal box I'm so happy we got a metal box um, as opposed to the plastic ones that's the only reason I bought it to be honest I I would have never bought the plastic palette. So when you open this one up, I really like that you've got the Daniel Smith logo here with their Seattle, Washington. You open it up. There's like little chippets of watercolor because they aren't wrapped, which I like that I don't have to unwrap everything and have a bunch of um, garbage when I'm finished. It's got another one of those foamy pieces and then you do get a plastic sheet of all the colors so you have buff titanium Hansi yellow and gold Hansi yellow we'll go through these when I swatch them but I really like that it gives you that I will make a paper one too just so that they aren't um they aren't this is not a true representation of the color so I like to do them on paper um the one thing I noticed is they shrink so you can actually, like this one fell out, and you can see the three different levels of pour and how it shrunk. Hang on, where's a white piece of paper so you guys can see this? It's like little steps. Can you see them? One, two, three. So it's like little steps. It's not actually square. So the bottom of the pad is actually shrunk a lot more than the top. How paint dries, which I'm fine with, whatever. It's, it's the way it is. So lots of them are shrunk and are, like this one's a little bit over full but it'll come out as well, like if I, let's do this. You can see how it comes out of the sides, but on the same note, it tips over and you have the little steps as well. So it's not, and it's it's the way they dry from being poured and I, I'm not complaining about it, I'm just showing you guys what I've noticed. Um, some of them have like little holes in the paint you see that just from being hand poured um so there's a few that have that which I mean it's it's hand poured and I'm fine with it 
They aren't level right to the top like my Schmincke ones were. I don't know if I have any in here that are... Oh, my poor Schmincke palette. Look at how beat up that thing is. Anyway, I don't know if I have any that are actually still full enough to tell. This one, like, see this one falls out as well. But it doesn't have the steps as bad like uh, that you can see like you can in the Schme or in the Daniel Smith pans. Um, let's put that one back in. So now, here, this one's a good example. This is a color I don't use very often, so it's kind of barely been touched. Let's pull that out. Come on. So you can see how this one is filled, I hope you guys can see it, is filled right to the top. It's got a little dint in it, dint in it like not very much at all because I don't use this color a ton, but that's just from me using it. But they are filled like flat or above the line on the pan, like above the top of the pan, um, whereas the Daniel Smith ones, ha lots of them are and indented. Ooh, let's see. They're all popping out. Anyway, they're indented. So you can see, yeah, you can see it with the reflection of the light. How it's not level and it's just kind of in the palette or inside of the pen, like this one too, isn't, isn't filled like right to the brim. Which, that's the way they pour them. Not complaining, just sharing my observations. Um, that's the new quinacridone gold. I've never used the mixed version of quinacridone gold from them. I have enough socked away of the original PO49. So yeah, so some of them are indented and that's the way the paint shrinks. They do hand pour these three times. And I am going to grab my, one of my sketchbooks and we're going to do swatching of all of these in there. I'll make the little one for up here later. But we're gonna do some swatching and some playing and talk about the colors in the palette and yeah I love these paints I already know I really enjoy the Daniel Smith watercolors so it's not like a first look at me using their paints I've been using their paints for a very long time if you've been watching the channel but I really enjoy the color story they have here um there's about eight colors in here that I've never used before from them but yeah so let me grab that and we'll jump into the swatching and I will start voicing it over so I can speed it up a little bit Okay, so jumping into the swatching, we're kicking things off with Buff Titanium, Hansa Yellow Light, Quinacridone Gold, Hansa Yellow Deep, and Pyral Scarlet. I'm really enjoying um, the palette. You guys are going to see some mixing at the end of how it mixes some really great purples and some more like neutral tones like dumbing down the reds into peaches and beautiful colors like that. I'm, I've only played with it a little bit here. I've done one piece with it that you guys, I didn't videotape. I'll be doing some videos with this specific palette a little later on. So you guys can see how I'm going to use it in my cards and other things. Um, I do lots of painting outside of card making and outside of YouTube. So it, it's, I really enjoy having the, just the options. And this one was a fun one for me to purchase. So the second row there was Permanent Alizarin Crimson, Quinacridone Rose, Ultramarine Blue, Cerulean Blue Chromium, and Thalo Blue Green Shade. Now we're into the green row, which is my favorite. And we have Cobalt Turquoise, Thalo Green Blue Shade, Sap Green, Perling Green, and Undersea Green. I really like the range of greens we get. Sap green, I know it's a convenience color, but I use it so much. It's so nice to have it just in the palette. Um, then we have raw sienna light, yellow ochre, geothite, which is brown ochre, Indian red, quinacridone, burnt orange, burnt sienna, burnt umber, raw umber, and Jane's gray. So it it's a really it's a great well-rounded palette. I'm going to have a blast playing with this one. Did I need to buy this palette? No, I have so much paint. I didn't need to buy it. I'm I have all of the colors aside from eight. I just wanted the tin and I really wanted to kind of share it in a video and see the colors that they had all put together. And I'm I'm happy I bought it and I'm going to haul it all over the place with me. So I'm super excited about that. Now we're going to jump into some mixing and share some of that with you guys. Okay, and so that I was will all of our swatches. Back live. Um, I really love how we get like some staples that I put in my palette, like these two, um, sap green, perlane green. I've never used Daniel Smith's Yellow Ochre. I don't have this one. I don't have this one. I don't have this one. But this is a mix of Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine Blue. So, I mean, me, that one I kind of probably would have left out and put something else in. 
Um, but I really like kind of the, the color story they have going. I'm going to just play a little bit down at the bottom here and mix some colors together. We don't get any purples. So we have a quinacridone rose, which is a beautiful pink. This color is amazing. I never seem to grab it for my palettes, but I do really like it. So on one side of it, I'm going to mix in a little bit of the phthalo blue. Uh, need more pink. Phthalo blue is a super strong color. Had a moment, but so that gives us a purple in the middle. It's super dark on camera, I'm sure, but I'll wash it out here down below. So you can make some beautiful purples. Like that color is gorgeous. Um, I'll put the cerulean on the other side. I don't like ultramarine for purples because it granulates. Um, so this one will be more of a warm toned purple or blue. Purple, blue. Jesse, get your brain together here. So this one's more violety, this one's more pinky, like on the actual purpley side. I really like that. Um, so it's going to give you lots of options. Quinacridone gold, so um, quinacridone gold and your phthalo green blue shade should make your sap green. Um, super easy to do. I always put sap green in my palette because I use it all the time and I like it as a convenience color. I didn't mix it to the strength they have it there, but yeah. So that's a very pretty green. Um, I really have enjoyed playing with yellow ochre in my Mexico palette. If you guys haven't seen about my Mexico palette, I'll have it linked up above. I've been using it a ton for my card making and stuff. So that one's been really fun to play with. And I think it's just, it's a fun color. It kind of muddifies everything and I really enjoy that. Like you can get like a really dusty peachy color out of it. And it's just, it's, it's a color I really enjoy playing with. So I really like that the mixing in this one, like with this palette is going to be great. I like that I can mix in the palette and it's not going to leak outside, which is something that was the reason why I never decided to purchase or try any of the other palettes that they did. I really like using cobalt turquoise to mix dusty, muddy greens for my leaves. Um, the quinacridone rose, I'm just going to take a little bit of it because it's such an overpowering color. I like to yellow that one up and dirty it up. So I would probably mix in a little bit of buff titanium and eh, maybe a little bit of raw sienna to kind of give me a florally type color. Like that's really pretty. Um, the more pink you add to it, the more it stays on the pink side. So that's kind of what I enjoy with palettes. I know lots of people think I just paint straight from the color. I mix colors all the time. Um, I just mix them off to the side and then use them to paint my floral. Like this would be a really pretty flower. That would be really pretty on a flower. I like both of those greens. I love the granulation you're getting on this one here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit into our mixing. Um, I love the granulation you get with the cobalt turquoise because it's heavy and it falls outside of our yellow. I just think they're super fun. Indian red. Now this color I love. I never use it. Oh, that's not Indian red. That's not Indian red. That's quinacridone burnt orange, which again is a fun one. <laughs> I'll definitely play with it. Mix it with a little bit of red. Oh, let's take a little more of that. And you can get really deep colors that are moody. Wash it out with some water. Like that's beautiful. I just, I really enjoy mixing. Okay, let's go back to this Indian red that I was going to talk about. Indian Red. This is a color I never use. I love it. I think this color is gorgeous. Um, it has a very big drying shift. Like here, it's a lot more red in person. I'm not sure how well it's showing up in camera. But up here when it dries, it turns a lot more maroon. Um, you could probably drop a little bit of blue in with it and see what you get. You get kind of a grayed out color. So that's a nice neutral. Um, if I mix, say, a little bit of rose with it. We can probably warm it up for shadows on flowers and it would be very, very pretty. What else can I mix it with? Let's take the red and put a little, so that's the Indian red again. Take a little bit of the quinacridone gold. Um, do I love this quinacridone gold? I'm going to do an entire video comparing it to the old one because honestly, I don't know, but I like that brown. 
So I really kind of think I need to play with this specific color a little bit more now that I have it in a palette and I'm kind of interested in it. This would be a really pretty like um, dusky, oh I'm off screen. This would be a really pretty flower like card just with the washed out version of the Indian Red and the Perylene Green. Mixing them together I should get a neutral type color. So it's just kind of fun to take to take your colors and play with them. What haven't I played with here? Um, let's take that geothite. That's not it. My goodness, Jesse, pay attention to what you're grabbing here. The geothite brown, which is your brown ochre, another color I've never played with. I've or wanted to order this one lots. Um, it doesn't re wet as well as the rest. It's definitely one that shrunk down in the palette. I think it's really pretty on its own. I'm probably going to really enjoy it with a little bit of sap green. See, I love that. Those are the type of colors I really like to mix into my florals. Um, they just make me happy. <laughs> How about some bright red to warm it up? See, I like that too. And I like that it granulates so you're going to get that texture in all of your stuff. And you can see how when you add more water and just wash those colors out, they just become a little more um, playful and friendly. Like that's almost like a skin tone. You could use it on a peachy flower. So this palette's definitely going to be fun. I am going to do a lot more filming um, with this one, doing some cards with it. I'm happy I bought it. Did I need it? No. Um, if you have a lot of watercolors and a lot of Daniel Smith watercolors, it's definitely not something you need to pick up. This piece of paper I'm probably going to chuck and make my own. Um, just so I have like the actual color swatch as opposed to this. I do like that they show you the ones that granulate and things, but the colors are always off. Like your phthalo green isn't even close. So I don't like to keep this as my, as my way to look at the colors. I do like that all of the information is on this. So like your quinacridone gold, for example, is PO48 and PY150. Um, it gives you your light fast, transparency, all of that fun information on here. What, um, what series of paint it is in the Daniel Smith line. So I like that they put tons of information on this, um, which I will transfer over onto my own sheet. I will probably just keep this in a drawer so that I have it. But that's what I have for you guys so far on this palette. Um, like I said, I will be doing some more filming with it, so I hope you guys will come in and check that out, and I will see you soon in another video. Bye for now.